This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you did the day before yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for greater things that you will do tonight, Father. Father, we thank you. Thank you for heavens that is open above us, Father. Thank you, Lord, because it's going to rain upon all. Your blessing, your favor, your miracle, Father. Lord, it's going to rain healing here tonight. It's going to rain deliverance here tonight. It's going to rain victory tonight. It's going to rain miracle tonight. No lie will remain the same. No lie will remain the same. No lie will remain the same. No one will remain the same. We give you praise, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. Just before you have your seat, I wanted to make uh, some declaration tonight. Quickly turn your Bible with me to Isaiah chapter 65. And I read verse 24. I'm going to read in New King James. And then I will read in New Living Translation. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24. And tonight, which is the grand finale, I want your heart to be open. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's all say, it is my special night. Now don't forget, I told you that Jesus said, Mark 11, 23, whatever you say, you will have it. All right? Okay, so Isaiah 65 verse 24. And this is God speaking here. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Let someone say tonight, God will answer me. I want you to say we come and say tonight, God will answer me. So you see, God is committed to answering the prayer of his people. God said, before they call, I will answer. I will answer. So on the side of God, there is no reluctance to answering prayer. Is somebody paying attention? Amen. And tonight, I want you to pray with such assurance, with such a confidence that God, your Father, has committed himself to answering your prayer. Could you give me a New Living Translation? I want everyone to see this. Now, this render it more beautifully. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24, New Living Translation. Look at what God says. He said, I will answer them before they even call to me. Amen. 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 Because he already knows what is Amen. in your heart. Amen. The miracle, the healing, the victory, the deliverance, Hallelujah. the bread to God knows what you are talking about. Before you finish talking, he knows what is he talking about. Amen. And look at what he says. He said, and why they are still talking. About their knees. Amen. Why they are still what? Talking Amen. about their knees. Amen. What will God do? He said, I will go ahead and answer their prayer. Amen. That's how I said that will be my experience tonight. That will be my experience. So look at God, he said, why you are still talking about your need? <laughs> Why you are still talking about your need? Amen. I will go ahead and I will answer. Amen. And tonight, now with such a confident assurance, that's what I wanted to pray. Amen. That before you finish praying, the answer is already on. Some people are telling you what I'm talking about. Amen. That's what I'm saying tonight. tonight. Before I finish the prayer, finish the my answers are already here. I wanted to say, let us say, before I finish my prayer, I finish my, my answers prayer. have come. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, all right? Look at this, and then you're going to open your mouth and pray. Mark 11, 24. Now, this is Jesus speaking here. He said, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray. Let's have say whatever, whatever. whatever. That includes your healing, your deliverance, your victory, your pleasure, your miracle. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Mark eleven twenty four. whatever things you ask when you pray, 
Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. Whatever you pray, whatever things you ask in prayer, believe that you receive them. Amen. So you see, as far as Jesus is concerned, the place of prayer is also the place of receiving. That's what I said, the place of prayer is also the place of receiving. So he said, when you pray, you receive. When you pray, and tonight, now I wanted to know that prayer is not completed without receiving. So I want to attention. That is why God committed Himself to answering prayer. He doesn't want you to even finish it. He said, when you pray, Amen. believe you receive. Amen. And you know something, you're going to see the money for you. You have it, that's what he said. I want you to lift up your right hand and say, I believe the word of God tonight. I want someone to declare, I believe God is faithful. I believe God keeps his promises. And according to the word of the Lord, whatever thing I have tonight, I receive in the name of Jesus. Let someone say tonight in the name of Jesus. Before I finish talking to God about my situation, God will go ahead and answer me in the name of Jesus. I want someone to say in the name of Jesus, in this place of prayer tonight, it is also my place of receiving. Let someone say tonight is a night of receiving. I am receiving answer to all prayers tonight. I am going home with answer to prayers tonight. That's what I want you to expect tonight. Yes. That every prayer that you pray here tonight, you are receiving answer to him. That's what I'm saying. That is my experience tonight. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because let all men be liar. Lord, you are true, God. You are ever faithful, Lord. And Lord, we have no cause to doubt your promises. You are faithful. You watch over your world to bring them to power. And tonight we believe with you, Father, that whatever is has in this place of prayer tonight tonight, it shall be answered. And Lord, I ask Lord tonight, according to your promise, that everyone, oh God, every one of your children tonight, is going home, Lord, with full answer to their prayers. They are going home with manifestation, Lord. They are going home, Lord, with a miracle, with the healings, with a breakthrough, with deliverance, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so tonight I want you to get ready. Get ready for miracle. That's what I'm saying. Get ready for miracle tonight. Get ready for miracle tonight. Tonight I want to challenge you to make room for miracle. That's what I'm saying. Make room for miracle. All right. Miracles, all right, require that you make preparation, that you make plan, that you make room for them. And tonight I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to make room for miracle. Quickly, I want you to go with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 3. All right, we're going to look at an incident in 2 Kings chapter 3. And we're going to draw some lessons and then we go straight into prayer. Glory be to God. The book of 2 Kings chapter 3. The book of 2 Kings chapter 3. All right. Now, could you please uh, take it? All right. Now, the book of 2 Kings chapter 3. Now, pay attention to me very well tonight. Now, I want to give you a background. Now, it's such a long passage. And so I'm going to paraphrase and I'm going to read some selected verses that I wanted to pay close attention to. That's what I'm saying. Pay close attention. Close attention. All right. So, in 2 King chapter 3, what happened? You know, in those days, uh, the powerful king, all right, now, when they go to the battle and then they win and subdue the other territories of the other king, then the other king become a subject to them and pay tribute to them, all right? So there was this king of Israel, all right, that was called Ahab, all right? Ahab was a powerful king, all right? And then he went uh, uh, to the king of Moab and he was able to conquer that land and Besha was the king of Moab and right from that time, this king began to pay tribute, all right? Began to pay monthly dues uh, to the king of uh, Israel, the king of Ahab and then King Ahab died 
And his son, that is called Joram, took over. And do you know what? This king Moab that has been paying tribute and dues for the king of Israel said, I am tired of it. <laughs> All right. Your father is dead. I'm not going to serve the father and serve the son. And so he rebelled against the son now and said, I'm not going to serve you. I'm not going to be giving you anything. And do you know what the son did? The son said, I'm not taking that lightly. All right. I'm going to the battle. And then he called all the two kings, his friend, the king of of uh, Judah and the king of Edom and he said guys now the king of Moab who served my father who paid tribute to my father now he had rebelled against me and do you know what I'm going to the battle friends are you going with me and then they say, yes, we're going to the battle with you, all right? So let's read from verse 4, all right? That's the background uh, uh, story that I wanted to have at the back of the mind. So now Mesha, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder. And he regularly paid the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. So this is what he paid regularly. But it happened when they have died that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jehoram, that is the son of Ahab now, went out of Samaria at that time and most of all Israel. So he gathered all his army together. Then he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, the king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? And he said, I will go up. And I'm as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, now pay attention now, which way shall we go up? And he answered, we are going by the wilderness of Edom. Now pay attention. So these uh, people gathered themselves together with the army and they were going to fight the battle. But you know something? They enter into a crisis. And I wanted to pay close attention to what happened in verse 9. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. So you have three kings, you have three armies that gather together and they are going to the battle. But something went wrong. Are you paying attention? Something went wrong in their journey. Now the Bible says in verse 9, and they march on that roundabout route seven days. Let's not say roundabout. Roundabout. So I'm all, they just miss their compass. Yeah. All right? Now they were in the wilderness and suddenly they found themselves just marching roundabout. And the Bible says that continued for seven days. So now it. As many of all that have been going round about, you look at your life, you look at your relationship, your finances, your marriage, everything is going round about. It's just a circular motion. You are not moving forward. That is coming to an end tonight. Let some say it is coming to an end tonight. I want someone to say every circular motion is coming to an end tonight. It's coming to an end tonight. It's time for progress. It's time for progress. And so for seven days. The Bible said they were just marching around the bar. And do you know what began to happen to them? They began to exhaust all their supplies. All right, for seven days, they were going nowhere. All right, they wanted to go to the battle. They were going for victory. And they lost their compass in the wilderness. And they were marching around the bar. And they lost, they exhausted all the water. And so, now not only have they lost their compass, now they are without water. Now, so the whole army was thirsty. They were in danger. They were in crisis. Look at what the Bible says. And there was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. And look at verse 10. And so, King Joram, the king of Israel, came to a wrong conclusion. Look at what he says. He said, alas, alas was a cry. He said, behold, we are in trouble. We are doomed. Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. He said, I know this, this is God's punishment for my sin, or maybe for the sin of my father. He said, I know this is God's trap for all. This is God's judgment on all. We are in trouble. God has given us all. Okay. Now, pay attention to me. Pay attention. Now, there are many of us that the devil make you think like that. Now, tonight, I want you to reset your mind. Some of you pay attention. Now, now, listen to this. When you find yourself in a crisis, when you find yourself in a situation, I want you to know that that is not God punishing you. Somebody pay attention? Amen. Are you with me? Oh, Amen. now the devil, you see, the reason why many of us don't receive the healing, the miracle, the victory, the breakthrough is because we think our present situation and crisis is God's doing. We think it's God's judgment. We think it's God's punishment. No, friend, God is not punishing you. Let me tell somebody, say, God is not punishing you. Do you know why? He already punished his sons for you. Now, on the cross, 
when Jesus hung on the cross, he received all the judgment for your sin, Amen. your past sin, your present sin, your future sin. Now you know something? All the judgment of God, all the wrath of God, all the anger of God Amen. was empty on Jesus on the cross. Amen. So when you have an attack from the devil, that is not God punishing you. Somebody pay attention? Now many of us, the reason why we stay long in our situation is because we think it is God dealing with us because of our sin. I want you to see some scripture tonight now because I'm getting you ready for miracle tonight. Now I need you to change your mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 18 and 19. Look at what Paul says. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to him, sir, through Jesus Christ, he has given up the ministry of reconciliation. Now, pay attention to verse 19 now, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Let's not say not imputing, not imputing. Now, so the Bible says, in Christ Jesus, God is reconciling people to himself. Yeah. God is not judging people. God is calling people to himself, and the Bible says, he does not input their sin to them. You know what that means? He does not recall their sin. Go to verse 19. He does not keep record of their sin. Are you with me? Oh, but pastor, I've not been living right, and I know I'm in this mess, I'm in this situation because of my sin. No, friend, you have just accepted the lies of the devil. Somebody pay attention? Now, do you know why? Because God has promised that he will not impute his sin to all. God has promised I will not judge men for their sin. Because the judgment was on Christ. It is only those who rejected Christ that will face the judgment of God on the judgment day. Amen. Is somebody paying attention? Amen. The Bible says in Hebrew here to where that God says under the new covenant, I will be merciful to what? Their righteousness. Oh, pastor, I have not been righteous. God says, I'll be merciful. He didn't say, I will bring your righteousness to record and I will judge it. Now, many of us, like kingdom of Israel, when we find ourselves just moving around the bow, we think that is God's judgment. And that is why you stay longer there. We think the sickness hey. is a result of some sin or something that we did. No, friend, no, friend. Tonight, I need you to change your mind because it is time for your miracle. I say it is time for your healing. Amen. So, Amen. your mind must be renewed. So, you see, God says, there are sins and there are lullabies and we remember no more. Let some say, he keep no record of my sin. I want you to say, we come and say, God keep no record of my sin. So, you see, it is the lie of the devil to keep you longer than necessary in every situation, in a crisis. Once you believe and agree with the devil that it is God's judgment. So the king of Israel said, I know where we, why we miss our road. I know where we are lost in the wilderness. I know where we are just running about for seven days. I know where we are without water. God is punishing us. God has given us hope. But that is not true. That is not true. Tonight I want you to know that God has not given you hope. Let's say God has not given me hope. No. Whatever challenge, whatever situation that you are going through, I want you to know it is a set up for me. Let's all say it is a set up for miracles. It is a set up for miracles. God is ready for miracles. And so tonight, that's what I wanted to know. That every challenge, every situation, maybe it's a health challenge, maybe it's a marriage challenge, maybe it's a financial challenge. That is a set up for God's glory. That's a set up. So it is not judgment, it is a set up for miracles. Let's all say my situation is not a judgment from God. It is a set up for miracle. It's a set up for miracle. Let's go back to that story. Let's go back. So in 2 Kings chapter 3, so they were there lost in the wilderness, and the king of Israel concluded wrongly that that was God, but that was not God. That was not God judging them. And thank God for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. The man said, I don't think so. Do you know what? He said, Let's call for the prophet. Let's look for a man of God. Amen. We need to hear from God. Amen. We need to know what God is saying. Yes. We are lost in the wilderness. Yes. Now, we have an army coming against us. Yes. We are without water. Now, how will army 
that are already famishing, they're still that are weak, how are they going to win the battle? Of course, you know, they're not going to win. That is why the king of Israel said, God gave us all to this uh, kingdom world. And Joseph said, let's go for the prophet. And do you know what? They got a prophet. Amen. And so they got a servant of God. And then they brought the servant and said, hey. now we want to know exactly Amen. what is our faith? What is going to happen to us? And they brought a prophet of God with the word of God in his mouth. And look at Elisha. Look at verse 13 now. Quickly, let's jump to verse 13 now. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, What am I to do with you? All right, go to the prophet of your father. Before that time, the king of Israel was consulting first prophet. Uh -huh. But now Jehoshaphat has said, Well, I know, I, I believe in the true God, and I'm going to consult only the prophets of God. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, That is not true. And so listen to what happened from verse 15. Now don't miss it, pay attention. But now the prophet said, bring me a musician. I need a singer. In those days, the Holy Spirit always rests on the prophet and then leave them. Alright? So when they want to get the, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, they sing, they worship. And then the musician began to sing and then the Spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet and the prophet opened his mouth and he began to prophesy and he began to declare the mind and the counsel of God. Now pay attention to what he declared. Now pay attention because that's where I'm going tonight. In verse 16, then the prophet said, thus says the Lord. The Lord God of Israel, thus yes, the law, make this valley full of ditches. Amen. Amen. Thus yes, the law, make what? This valley full of ditches. Make it full of trenches. Make it full of holes. Now, do you know what God is saying? Now, they were, they were thirsty. Their first, now pay attention, the first need that they, they, they had is water. Water, water. You know, when you are really thirsty, nothing else matters. Even though they have lost their way in the wilderness, even though they are going to the battle, but now they are thirsty and they are desperately in need of water. And God of heaven knows that. And God said, I am ready to do something. The stage is set for a miracle. I'm going to show you my glory. And God say, I need you to do something. You know what? Make this valley full of riches. Do you know what God is saying? Make room for miracle. Now, listen. They are in the wilderness. The wilderness is dry. There is no rain. And God say, I'm going to do something. But you know what? Make room for it. Somebody pay attention? That's what God is saying to you tonight. These three nights, if there's any time I wanted to go on with, is that God is calling you to make room for the miracle that you desire. I mean, tell someone say, make room, make room, make room. So God was about to do something. But if they are not going to miss the miracle, they need to get ready for it. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. So the prophet said, Thus says the Lord of Israel, I'm about to do wonder. But guys, so that you don't miss it, make room, make preparation, yes. make plan for it, so that you can maximize it, so that you can enjoy it. Now listen to what happened. Jump to verse 17 quickly. Now he said, For thus says the Lord, you shall not see the wing, nor shall you see the ray, yet that valley shall be filled with what? With water. What? There shall be no rain. God said the cloud is not going to change. All right. So God said, don't, don't, don't rely on your senses. Somebody pay attention. That's what God is saying to you. Enough of observing. Enough of looking at the thing that you can see. God said, no, 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 no. I'm doing something beyond your senses. Somebody pay attention. I'm doing something beyond what you can feel. You shall not see the rain. The wind shall not gather. The cloud shall not gather. But God said, yes, there shall be water. Yes, there shall be water. Where is the water coming from? That's not your business. Just leave that to God. How we God do it? That's not your business. Do you know your business? Make room for God. Get ready for the miracle. God said, guys, all you need to do, get the dishes, all right? So in the wind, God said, you know what? Begin to dig holes now. Because you need to reserve the water. You need to keep the water. The journey is deeper. Make dishes. Make fire for the trenches. Get ready for what I'm about to do. And that's what God is saying to you. Many of us are praying. We are fasting. We are 
asking God, I need miracle, I need miracle. But if the miracle comes, you are not yet ready for it. You are not making any preparation. You are not making any plan. You have no room for it at all. You're going to miss it like that. Now, can you imagine if God brings the water and there are no trenches, there are no holes, there are no, there are no ditches to receive the water. The water will just flow just like that. That's what God is saying. I'm ready, I'm ready. So make ditches. That's what God told her. Let the valley be full of ditches. But the water is coming. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Now some say, it doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter what I don't see. I want to just say, it doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what I don't feel. Yet my miracle is coming. Yet it is coming. 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 Are you see tonight before we pray? That's what I wanted to do. Make room for the miracle. Yeah. All right. Oh, Pastor, I've gone to that place many times and you have rejected me. But you know, it is a season of miracle. Do you know what it means to make room for miracle? You go back again. Yeah. That's what it means. I know things have changed. I know God has gone ahead of me. I know the favor of God is upon me. And we have been rejected before. We have told me there's no vacancy. I'm going back here. Yeah. That is someone that will see the miracle. Yeah. That's what God is saying. That's what God is saying. Yeah. Pastor, you know what? I don't don't have any man that desire me, but I desire to get married. Do you know what? They start making preparation. Yes, amen. Start doing what you can do. That is what it is to make room for miracles. You know, Pastor, I need a child. The doctor says something is wrong with my womb that I cannot conceive. Do you really want a miracle child? They start getting ready. Some of you start yeah. buying things that you need. That is what it means to make room. Many of us talk about miracle, but we don't make any room for it. And when God check, God say, you are not yet ready. Make room, make room, make room. Make preparation, make plan for him. If somebody pay attention, there's something you can do. The water has not come, but at least they could still dig the ditches. They can make the hole, they can make room. And that's what God asked them. God will never ask you to do what you cannot do. If he asks you to do something, it is because he knows you can do it. And you know what? This thing in mind, that's what I wanted to have in mind. That God is ready for miracle, but you need to get ready as well. So God told them, by his prophet, let the valley be full of dishes. And guys, don't study the rain. Don't study the weather. Don't study the cloud. Water is coming. Look at the next thing that happened. Look at the next thing that happened. So you need to get ready. Get ready. Get ready. And verse 18 say, and God said, this is what? A simple matter in the sight of the Lord. Let's not say a simple matter. He said, say big things in their sight. Lost in the wilderness for seven days. No rain, no wind, no cloud. And yet God said, the valley shall be filled with water. And God said, and it's a simple thing. Let's not say my miracle. It is a simple matter. In God's side. You may say, oh, Pastor, you don't know what the doctor report say. That is in doctor's side. That is in your side. But in God's side, what you call a big matter, it's a simple matter. Let's not say my healing. It's a simple matter. It doesn't matter the name that causes the sickness. It doesn't matter how long it has been in your body. It doesn't matter what your experience has been. I want you to know tonight before we pray that it is a simple matter in your side. Oh, but that's why it is so hard. I've been to so many places. Many people have prayed for me. Now that is why you need to reset your mind. It is a simple matter. Don't let the devil deceive you. It is not a big deal. Let some say my miracle. It's not a big deal with God. It's not a big deal with God. So, these people were lost in the wilderness for seven days. They were just running about, and God said, I'm bringing water. And that would have been enough for them. You know what I'm saying? They would have said, I thank God we didn't die in the wilderness. Let's go back home and prepare again. But God said, I'm just starting with you. Let's not say God is just starting with me. God said, this one is a simple matter. I have something bigger on the way. And look at it, God now told them. God told them, he said, this that is providing water is a simple matter. God says, I will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. God says, I'm going to give you the victory. Yeah. 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 
Providing water in the wilderness. God says it's a simple matter. Yeah. And God said, what you didn't ask me. Alright? Yeah. I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. You will get the victory. And listen to what happened as we get ready to pray. Verse 20 now. The Bible said, now it happened in the morning. When the grain offering was offered. Alright? That suddenly. Let's say suddenly. suddenly. I want to hear you loud and say suddenly. suddenly. Now that is what I'm trusting God for tonight. That suddenly your healing will come. Yeah. That suddenly your miracle will come. Yeah. Suddenly what you have been waiting for we come. Yeah. The Bible says suddenly what I came. What I came. Do you know where it came from? From the way of the wilderness. Yes. Who can explain that? It didn't come from heaven. Is somebody paying attention? There was no rain. But suddenly, without any explanation, what I just came from the wilderness. From the way of Edom, and the land was what filled with water. Let them say, filled with water. Now, can you see why God said, Make the valley full of dishes? Yes. Yes. If they didn't do that, what happened to the water? It will be worse than cream. They will not see the water going, and the little they will take that's the end of it. That is why God says, Get ready, because the miracle is coming suddenly. That's why He said, Don't study the weather. God told them, Don't study the weather. It's coming suddenly. That's what say it is coming suddenly. God is touching me suddenly. God is visiting my life suddenly. God is turning around suddenly. But you need to get ready. If you're going to miss that sudden yeah. divine visitation, yeah. then you need to get ready. You need to get ready. Amen. And tonight, that is exactly what I wanted to do. God is a God of suddenly. Yeah. When God wants to do something, if you're observing the weather, some of the attention, yeah. if you're studying uh, with your natural senses, you're going to miss it. Yeah. Some of the attention. Yeah. If your eyes are glued on the way you feel in your body, you're going to miss it. Yeah. Oh, Pastor, I didn't feel any heat. I didn't feel no. You're going to miss it like that. Yeah. That's why God said, don't look at the rain. Don't look at the wind. It's going to come. It's going to come. Yeah. And tonight, that's exactly what God is going to do. And as I said tonight, I want to pray with you. I want to agree as many that trust in the law for something that they know. And they are believing with me tonight that it is a simple matter. I don't want them to see it as a big thing. There is nothing big in his side. Everything is a simple matter in God's side. And so your situation, it doesn't matter how long it has been, it is a simple matter. Let some say a simple matter. Simple matter. Now, let me share this with you. And one day here in this church, a lady came to, to the church for the first time. Alright? And uh, normally when people come for the first time, I ask them, so what do you want me to be praying for? And then she said, you know what, Pastor? I've been looking for a job for years. I'm tired, all right? And I said, so you want a job? She said, yes, I want a job. I said, that's a simple thing. And I, I, I could see the look on her face like, when well, this guy is from Nigeria, she, <laughs> he doesn't really understand. I've been looking for a job for long. I said, that's a simple matter, all right? And that is it, all right? And I said, don't worry, you get a job this week, all right? Now, not much prayer, just a simple prayer of agreement. And you know, that Sunday, she came for the first time on Sunday. The next Wednesday, I got a call from her. I said, Pastor, I've got a job. I said, is there a kind of a job that you like, all right? Because we could still press on and get it. He said, that's exactly what I'm looking for. That's so what you see, what you call a big thing, it is a simple thing in the sight of God. But you know what? Your mind was being blessed. You you must agree with God that it is a simple matter. You must agree with God that He's not the one punishing you. You must agree with God that your situation is not a judgment from God. You must agree with God that it's just a setup for miracles. That's a setup. And so, whatever you are asking God for tonight, I want you to get ready. It is coming suddenly. I say it is happening suddenly. The Bible says, suddenly, what I can. Suddenly, what I can. People who have been lost for seven days in the wilderness. And you know that's not the end of the story, you know. And you know what? And as they were enjoying the water and, and enjoying and, and thanking God, wow, what at last? Do you know what happened? God turned things around. And their enemies on the other side, they began to the sun, the Bible said the sun, when you read for that, the Bible said the sun shone on the water. And the enemy thought when they saw it, it was like blood. They said, What? It's like these people have killed themselves. Now, their blood filled all the ditches. And do you know what? They left all their weapons behind. And they said, let's go and get everything they brought to the battlefield. And by the time they went into the camp, without any weapon, guess what happened? They just took them, and it was a cheap victory for them. Amen. So you see, God, they didn't know that everything was a setup for miracles. Amen. It was a setup. So, 
go in the wilderness, march around about for seven days without water, it was a center for their victory. Yes. I want you to know that everything that you have ever gone through, now once you believe with God, that it's not a judgment from God, that it is a center for miracles. Yes. Something bigger is coming your way. I tell something greater is coming for your way. Is somebody ready for that? Is somebody ready for that? Look at Malachi 3, 1, and then we rise up to pray. Now, Malachi 3, verse 1. Now, I want to pray with you tonight, so I don't want to take time preaching. Now, could you give me Malachi 3, 1? He said, the order sent my message there. And he will prepare the way before me. So, you see, God always wonder. God, because God is a God of suddenly. And so, he always sent people, make room, make preparation, prepare for it. Is somebody paying attention? And so, God said, I sent my message there before the way. He will prepare the way for me. And look at what he said. And the Lord... Whom you seek will come out suddenly. Let's not say suddenly. Said the Lord will come suddenly to his temple. So you see, that's the way God shows up. The healing will just happen suddenly, just like that. The pain will just leave your body suddenly, like that. The situation will just be changed suddenly, like that. Are you ready for that tonight? Are you ready for sudden divine visitation tonight? I want you to rise to your feet. I want you to rise to your feet. Let somebody shout my situation. It's a set up for miracles. And tonight, I want you to think. I want you to look at it. What is your present situation? What are you dealing with? What are you struggling with tonight? I want you to believe God's word that it is not a judgment from God. It is not a punishment from God. It is a set up for God's glory. It is a set up for miracles. I want someone to declare tonight in the name of Jesus. I agree with God. And I believe the word of God that my present situation is not a judgment from God. It's not a punishment from God. That's what I'm saying. God is not angry with me. God is not punishing me. He's not giving me hope. But God is preparing the stage for miracle in my life. And tonight in the name of Jesus, I am ready for the miracle. I am making room for miracle. It can come suddenly tonight. Let someone say it can come suddenly tonight. It can come suddenly tonight. My healing will come suddenly tonight. God's power is hitting me suddenly tonight. God's anointing is breaking my yoke suddenly tonight. The bondage will be broken suddenly tonight. The prison door will be open suddenly tonight. That demon will leave suddenly tonight. In the name of Jesus. Get ready for it tonight. Get ready for it tonight. Now, God told them, don't study the weather. God told them, now, don't, don't, don't determine the miracle by your senses. That's what God is saying. Don't look at the weather. Don't look at it. God said, you won't even see it. You won't see the wind gather. You won't see the cloud. You won't see the rain. But yet, the miracle will come. Amen. And that's exactly what God happened. Amen. And tonight, Amen. enough of fixing your mind on, on, on the thing that you see. Enough of relying on the thing that you feel. Tonight, I wanted to switch off from that. Is somebody been attention? Yes. No, no. Yes, you, you have relied so much on your senses. No. When God says he heals you, don't start feeling your body. No. Just believe I am healed. And it's going to manifest my body. It's going to manifest. And tonight, I just wanted to pray for yourself. And then I begin to pray with you personally. I wanted to lift up your voice tonight and you are going to say in the name of Jesus tonight in the name of Jesus I decree a turn around in my life those people the three kings and their army now I read to you the Bible said they march round about for seven days round about for seven days now that's what I wanted to deal with that circular motion that you are not just going anywhere things are just now when you think things are better you are back in square one now that needs to end tonight. That's what I say. Every evil cycle is breaking tonight. It's breaking tonight. Every evil pattern is breaking tonight. Are you ready for that tonight? So you're going to open your mouth and listen to me. Now, the way I want you to pray this few minutes is not the way you used to pray. Are you paying attention? You don't pray as if somebody is talking you, somebody is looking at you. No, no. Just face God. Forget about anyone around you. If you feel like jumping, jump. If you feel like screaming, scream. Now, you just pray, not considering anybody around you. Tonight is your night. I said, Tonight is your night. I said, Tonight is your night. Now, you're going to pray say, in the name of Jesus. Sir. Every evil circle in my life. I break you tonight. I put an end to you. Circular motion. Come to an end in my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray like. Yes, sir. Break away. Break away. I break every evil circle tonight. I want you to pray like that. I break every evil circle tonight. I break it tonight. I break it tonight. It is time to break through. I break away from evil pattern. Every pattern of disappointment. I break away. Break it. Break it tonight. 
Jesus mighty name we pray well that's good for a warming up amen we're just starting that's not say I'm warming up alright so that prayer is just a warming up it's just a warming up now you could do much better than that the match ran the bounds and the time came God brought that to an end they thought they were lost in the wilderness they thought they would die of task they thought they would be delivered to the enemy but you know something they got a cheap victory from the Lord they got a cheap victory from the Lord I wanted to declare say in the name of Jesus every circular motion come to an end to now it is time for progress in the Lord it is time for forward motion open your mouth and begin to pray yes yes sir it's time for move forward and move
to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org Dot .org dot uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering donation and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703 5572 or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk Thanks for listening.